what if? What if a man serving life for taking a life could actually save a life? What if? What if a convicted killer could prevent a murder? And if they could, what should we do about it as a society? Should we listen to them? Or should we continue to simply condemn these inmates? What if Anthony Annucci, the man who's responsible for overseeing all of the prisons in this state, and Michael Capra, the superintendent of this facility, chose to look at the inmates here, not simply as numbers, but as human beings, a human resource. And what if they chose to tap into that human resource to take on the epidemic of gun violence head on? In the summer of 2013, I received an email from Superintendent Capra. I had known him in my role as a producer for Dateline. I was filming a couple of stories here at Sing Sing. But this email was personal. It wasn't related to my work at NBC. He asked if I would volunteer to help a group of inmates, they called themselves the Forgotten Voices, have their voices heard beyond prison walls. Specifically, these men wanted to talk to young people from the communities that they came from about gun violence and the dangers of it and the consequences of their own choices. I happily obliged. And over the course of many months, we met a group of a dozen inmates many times before any cameras got turned on. And we talked and we deliberated and we thought about what we wanted this to be, about what they wanted this to be, about how to effectively communicate their message. They worked hard. They faced their fears. They embraced their shame. They sat in their cells and thought long and hard about the consequences of their deadly choices to their victims' families, to their own families, and to themselves. They didn't want to just wag their finger at a young person and say, put the gun down. They wanted this to be authentic. They wanted it to be real. We worked really hard. They worked really hard. And when we were ready, I roped in a couple of very good friends and talented artists, cinematographer Rich White and editor-producer Rob Allen. We came to Sing Sing. They volunteered their time as well. And we made a six-minute short film that you're about to see that we've called the Voices from Within Project. Since then, what we've seen, and what's been remarkable about this, is that what we've realized is that even though the intent was to do this for young people, it's changed the men involved with the project themselves, struggling with the ideas, am I worthy to even talk to anybody because of what I've done? They were seeking redemption. And now this is spreading across the prison. The music group is writing songs for a future documentary. Artists have made logos from inside this prison for this project. And now we've given it to the city of New York. And the mayor's office is methodically rolling this out across the five boroughs in an effort to reduce gun violence in the city. And you're going to be hearing more from the mayor's office in 2015 about that. But this has never been publicly displayed before. And I could think of no better venue than TEDx Sing Sing to show this video for the first time publicly. And we're not done with all of our what ifs. I'll leave you with this before we play with the video. What if someone from TED.com saw this video and saw these men put this video on their front page and it spread like wildfire across the internet and saved some lives? What if? My name is Lawrence Bartley. I came to prison when I was 17 years old. My name is Julian Castillo. I'm in prison because I killed two people. Been incarcerated 19 years, seven months. My name is LeBron Rogers. I shot my friend six times because I was angry. I know how it feels to have destroyed a family 
I know how it feels to have eliminated a name. You, you can't make it right. I didn't miss help. Sorry. I wanted to. There's just so many issues why people come to prison, but one of the bigger issues is gun violence, and we see it every day. The men who are incarcerated for a good many years here wanted to reach out to the community to say, don't do what I do. Don't do what I have done to get here. And trying to get these 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15-year-old kids to stop and think for just one second before they grab that weapon. My name is Tyrone Abraham. I'm 40 years old. I made a choice, a gun that I held in my hands. A gun, when I first held one, gave me a sense of power. It made me feel strong. It made me feel like I was invincible. You could be the bad thing that happens to somebody. Think about that, right? There could be a family, there's a child, and, 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 and a father, and there's a mother, and there's a family. They come here from Africa to build a better life, and they say to themselves, if I'm careful, if I'm careful, then I can reach this good thing as long as nothing bad happens. And then I happen to him. You want to be the bad? You want to be the bad? We're going through a journey, and their own guilt, that nightmare, plays back every single day to them. When I was 17, one of my friends suggested to me, why don't you carry a gun? You need this. So I took up a gun. I held it, and then this gun became my security. The bullet shot into the crowd were real last night at a premiere of the movie, Godfather 3. I entered a movie theater with a group of friends. Then another group of teens came in, yelling. Pretty soon, the argument erupted between my group and that group. One of them pulled out a gun and fired it. I returned fire. Police rushed in to find four innocent victims wounded in the crossfire two of them teenagers, including Tremaine Hall. I didn't think I was gonna hit anybody, but I did it anyway. A little boy was shot. He died that night. Another victim, a 17-year-old boy, is in stable condition tonight after surgery for a gunshot wound in the left eye. Doctors don't know yet whether they managed to save the sight in that eye. I lost the left eye, but that's not even the half of it. I'm fortunate, I'm blessed to be here. Uh, Tremaine, who's not here anymore, has given me strength. And there's not a day that goes by where I don't think about him. When I think of that, I think of what happened at my trial. His father got on the stand. <laughs> his father called this kid his buddy. That was his buddy. <laughs> I took his buddy away from him. Me? How does that sit with me? These guys are committed to really making an impact on somebody's life, realizing that they can't change the past, and it's about the possibility of changing the future. There is nothing you can do to make it right.
and it's that fast, and it's over, and it's done, and you don't even know what you did. And by the time you understand, it is too late. 